Hello everyone. Uh, in this short video, uh, I'm going to explore the state variables in Simio. Uh, I'll make a small example uh, to see uh, how do you how you actually utilize uh, this particular feature in Simio. And also, really, the big diff, uh, I think the main takeaway I want from this video is that you have to understand the difference between the state variable at the model level and at the model entity level. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, what are state variables? In Simio, exactly what it sounds like, it's a variable, just the same way you use variables in any other uh, programming language. Uh, you know, you have variable, you can assign values to these variables to hold uh, the values, you could change them within your simulation model. Uh, it could change based, you could program it change based on event, uh, etc. So it's just like any other variable in any programming language, it's the same idea. There are different types of state variable, or there's one state variable, but you could have different file types or data types, real value, integer value, Boolean string. You can also make variables an object reference, like different servers, vehicles, workers, any object in Simio, that could also be assigned to a state variable, etc. So uh, the screenshot on the right shows you uh, where you find these state variables. Once you go on definitions, at, at, this is at the model level. If you go on the definitions tab, uh, you'll see a states uh, paint, paint here, states view here. You click on states view and you have different options. So I've already generated a real state one, interstate one, string state one, just to show you. So these are all the different types of state variables you can generate. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's, you know, this is where how you access and you can generate a change the names, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also you'll have a similar option when you go into the model entity page, which I'll do in a second here. This, so this is at the model view. I have had, I have these state variables. If you go to the model entity, if once you go to the navigation uh, window here and then click on the model entity, there's also, so you can go to processes, definitions, data, et cetera. Under definitions, there's also a state uh, states uh, tab under views. And here you can also create different variables as well, okay? Um, so keep that in mind as we go into the next part of this video, um, in which we will build a simple model to demonstrate the point here. The model I'm gonna build is gonna be a very simple model. Uh, it's going to just have a few objects. Uh, it's gonna have a source with a defunity coming in and getting being generated and it can travel to either server one, server two, be processed and then leave the system through sync one. Very, very simple setup. So I'm going to walk through this and also build a model as I walk through this with you in the video. Uh, so here we go. Let's uh, kind of go through the steps here. Uh, first step is the model entity, which is shown as default entity in the screenshot here, is randomly generated by source one. Uh, and then after that, a random processing time using random.normal, mean of 10, standard deviation of 2, is assigned to the state variable monitor.timeserve. So this accomplishes two tasks here, or set up the topology for these two steps here. So I'm going to go to the source. Right now, the enter type is default entity, which is fine. Intro arrival, uh, let's see here, the intro arrival is random exponential. I'm going to leave this the way it is, it's fine. Uh, we have to change the process, we're going to create a processing time using random than normal. And assign it to a variable called monitor that time is served. So the first thing we have to do is create a state variable at the model entity level. So I'm going to go to model entity, go to definitions, and I'm going to create a variable called time serve. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to create a real type, data type, and I'm going to change the name of this to time serve. And again, this is at the model entity level and not at the model level. Okay, so this, you know, I'll kind of emphasize this a little bit later as well. This is a variable called time serve at the model entity level. Um, I'm not going to change anything else here. Um, you know, I don't have to specify anything else. Uh, I'm going to go back to the model now. Okay, I have to assign a value to that uh, state variable I just created. So um, I'm going to go to state assignments with the source one click. So just imagine this model entity has just been generated using this inter arrival uh, logic and with the inter arrival time of rather than exponential. Uh, 0 0.25 minutes. Um, so I'm going to now assign a processing time to that state variable I just created. So before exiting, okay, I'm going to create a, I'm going 
going to assign a value to a state variable. So I'm going to go to state variable with on entity dot and let's look for it here. Scroll down time. I think I called it time serve, right? So it's listed here because I created it, it's already listed. And a new value here would be random dot normal uh, mean of 10 and standard deviation of 2. Okay, say close. Keep this here. Okay. Uh, so it's going to assign a value. Look and show that again. It'll, it'll create a random value that's normally disputed with a mean of 10, standard deviation of 2. It'll take that value and store it into the state variable time serve under mod entity. Okay. Um, FY, I mean, Simio is just like any other, a lot, lot of other languages. This is an object, uh, object oriented programming. So I'm not going to go into any of the details. I'm going to try to make this video as simple as possible. Just know that this variable is owned by the model entity. Okay, so each model entity has a variable called time serve that it can it can manipulate, it can store, it can erase, and it can access basically. Okay, so I've set up the first two steps in my logic. Um, let's move on to the next steps here. Next step is the entity travels to either serve or one serves randomly. So right now I haven't changed any of the uh, the weights to these uh, paths, so I don't have to do anything. They're just still one and one, so we have 50-50 probability that the default entity travels to either server one or server two. Processing time in each server based on a, a value stored in mod entity does time server. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna have to read that uh, state variable as a processing time in each one of the servers. Let's start with server one here. Right now, the processing time is random dot triangular. So I'm gonna change this to model entity dot time serve. Okay. So you're telling Tim uh, Simio when the model entity enters the server, uh, rather than using random dot triangular, read the value that's stored in model entity dot time serve. Okay. So press enter. Uh, right now it's set of random. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to repeat for server two. Okay. Again, uh, model entity dot time serve. So, which, and again, the weights here are one one. So uh, the model entity will go either into server one, server two, with equal probability. And then it'll read the state variable time serve uh, as the processing time. Another thing I want to do here is that um, I want to store all of the processing time to server two in a variable. Okay, so every time a model entity enters server two and it processes that model entity, I want to store the length of time on a separate variable. Okay, we'll call this variable also time serve. Okay, so let's go create this variable at the model level uh, and then store this fast, store the processing time into this variable now. So that's going to, so now we're at the model level, not at the model entity level, at the model level. I'm going to definitions. Uh, let me start fresh by you know, deleting all three of these. Um, and then I'm going to create a new state variable. I'm going to call this time serve. Okay, leave everything as is. So this is now again a state variable called time serve, but it's at the model level now, not at the model entity level. Okay, and then back to facility view. Every time a model entity enters a server, I want to store the processing time, which is model entity dot time serve, into this new variable that I just created called time serve. It's all the same, but it's very different, right? So I'm going to do a state assignment here. Okay. Uh, so before exiting, okay, or I'll do it after processing. I can do it either, either way. Um, this, I'll just do it before exiting here. Uh, so before the model entity exits that server processing. Um, the state variable here will be time serve. So it's not modern inside time serve, it's just time serve. Okay. And the new value here will be time serve, time serve, uh, whatever it was before, plus modern entity dot time serve. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Modern entity dot time serve. Okay. So let's think about that. So Whatever time server was, the previous value, I'm adding on 
the processing time of the current model entity onto the value. So for example, uh, the model entity that just entered the process time of 10 minutes, then it'll add 10 minutes to the time server uh, variable. The next one comes in, let's say it had a process time of three minutes. Now it's 10 plus three, 13, and on and on. Okay, so we're keeping track of all of the processing time at server two. Okay, so we've done that. And then the final thing that happens is um, it doesn't matter which server one or server two, the model entity then leaves the system and goes into sync one. Okay, so I think we've had, we've set up the model correctly here. Um, just, you know, while we're at this, let's set up some, uh, you know, so that we can kind of check our work here. Let's set up some status labels. Okay, so just put one over here, down here, and I'm going to read my search here. Okay, so uh, this will tell me the total time, uh, you know, at server two. Uh, and then for another thing, you know, the one thing, we'll, one other thing you might want to do here is that maybe I want to read out the processing time for the model entity, whatever, it, whichever it goes, right? So um, let's do it over here. Um, you know what? Let's hold on for a little bit. Though. I'll come back to this. Let me finish the finish out the logic and ask really the main question here. Okay, so then the final thing that happens at this model, after processing that server one, server two, into the enter sync one, and that is leave the system and we're done, right? So we've set up our system. Really the main let takeaway I want, I want you to, uh, the, the main takeaway I want to show you, uh, you know, uh, with this example is of, um, really, you know, the difference between the state variable at the model level and the model entity, because we have two different state variables, right? One called time serve at the model level, and then another one called time server as well, but at the model entity level. Okay, so the question for you then, okay, is we have this variable called time serve. We call it the same thing at the model entity and also at the model level. So at the model is called time serve. At the model entity level is called model entity time serve. Are these two the same? Okay, they're both called time serve, but are these variables the same? I'll give you a few seconds to kind of think about that. Are these variables the same? Um, the answer is no, right? Because the model entity, give you an example here, okay? Uh, let's say, the, remember, these model entities get generated from the source, right? Multiple times, right? Okay, and each one of them is unique in a sense, right? So model entity, the first one that got created could have a value of five associated with that, stored into that variable. The second one could have a value of eight stored into that variable. The third one could have a value of three and on and on, right? Okay. Whereas this variable time serve, it's only one variable at the model level, okay? Um, so if you overwrite this value anywhere in your simulation, it'll overwrite and you only have one value, okay? Whereas, you know, the model entity level, if something happens to times, if you change the value for time serve for model entity three, let's say three becomes 10 now, it has no effect on these other two model entities, okay? Uh, so you have to understand the difference of the state variable, accessing it, editing it, or manipulating it at the model level and the model entity level. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the uh, simulation model and finish it out and show you the uh, show you, show you the action. Okay. Let's run the model to make sure this is actually running. This you know, uh, pause really quick here. I like to always just show you the entity itself. So let's uh, run it again. Going in there. Uh, okay, so right now I'm going to make it a little bit faster. So this is accumulation. All right, and another thing I want to do here, you know, just you know, there's a lot of things building up here. I'm going to go to the source and I change this inter arrival time to something much bigger so that we don't have so many entities showing up. Uh, let's do, I don't know, uh, let's do like two. Try that again. Still a lot of monitors piling up, so we'll probably like that a little bit more. Uh, uh, let me change it to seven. Let's do, uh, let's do 15, okay? So we're gonna have a lot fewer monitors appearing, but that's okay. What I really wanna do is show this one by one, okay? So let's, let's do another thing here. Um, Every time a model entity is generated, let's show the value of model entity dot uh, time serve 
right at the source of these. Okay, so I'm going to create a dummy variable here. So I'm going to go to definitions and create a, another variable. Let's say one. I'll just call this uh, dummy. So this is a dummy variable. Okay, I just call it dummy var. It's too long. Uh, dummy variable. Okay, and uh, there are a lot of ways to do this. When, I probably just want to use a watch window here, but just to so that I can have an indicator and kind of show you this. I'll make a, a status label. I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna create a status label. Okay, um, I'm gonna call this dummy var. And then at the source, um, I'm going to add another state assignment here. Okay, before exiting, I'm going to add, and then the state variable, as I already guessed it, dummy var. Okay, and then the dummy var variable will be model entity dot time serve. Okay, so, uh, and I'm going to slow down the simulation even more. Or uh, lengthen the intervals even more, so you can see this. Okay, so this indicator will tell me, or the status will tell me, the time served variable stored at the model table, what that value looks like, and this one tells me the total for every single model that travels the server to the processing times, uh, the cumulative. Okay, so I'm going to run this model now. Okay, let's pause it there. So the first model that got generated, this was a processing time. And then, as you probably guessed, zero plus model entity dot time serve is now the model entity dot time serve we had uh, that got assigned initially at the source. Let's keep running this. It's uh, the second model entity appears. Okay, right there, that was 11 point something. Uh, now this is updated to 21. And this third one has a time of 13, about 13 minutes. It went server one, right? So when, th when this model entity leaves server one, it should have no effect on this value here, okay, so run it. right, no effect, right, now the next one is 9.8, it under server 2, this should update to about, I would say 31, 31, 30 or 31, once it leaves, let's see what happens, oh, right here, 31, okay, so I'm going to pause it here, um, hopefully this kind of, you know, if you, you have any confusion about the state variable, the model entity versus the model level, hopefully this clears it up so that, you know, you can go ahead and build your simulation models and whatever you're trying to build. Uh, hopefully this helps in kind of clearing up that any confusion with that. Uh, state variables are very powerful, they're very useful. Uh, so you have to know how to create, uh, manipulate, and really access and edit, and, you know, uh, delete and all of that, right? Uh, to, make, to make more sophisticated simulation models, okay? So that's it in this video. Um, sorry if I broke off a little bit here and there, but um, uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, and take care. So check out some of my other, other videos. Take care.